Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Greg with Technically Speaking, back for the second week in a row. That's right, you got to put up with my big bearded face again. This week, we are digging into the performance differences between the 2016 and the 2017 MacBook Pro. I promise this is the last video in this series. We're putting it to bed today. We are going to figure out whether or not the 2017 MacBook Pro is worth the extra $1,000 over the 2016. Fair warning, this is gonna get pretty dorky. So both laptops feature 16 gigs of LPDDR3 running at 2133 megahertz and a 512 gigabyte uh, solid state hard drive. So because these components are pretty much the same thing, they shouldn't provide any source of real performance difference. So for the time being, we're just gonna skip them. The 2016 MacBook Pro features an Intel Skylake Core i7 6820HQ released in 2015, runs at 2.7 gigahertz and is capable of single core turbo speeds of up to 3.6 gigahertz. It's got four cores, support for up to eight threads, eight megs of shared L3 cache, and a 45 watt TDP. On the other hand, the 2017 model features an Intel Kaby Lake Core i7 7820HQ. It was released in early 2017 and runs at 2.9 gigahertz with single core turbo speeds of up to 3.9 gigahertz. Has the same four cores, eight threads, eight megabytes of shared L3 cache and a 45 watt TDP. Everything else on these chips is basically the same down to the 14 micron manufacturing process and the BGA 1440 socket type. So if we're gonna find a real performance difference between these two to justify that extra thousand dollars, looking at the CPU probably isn't going to do it. Now the GPU on the other hand might be a difference maker. The 2016 has an Intel Iris HD Graphics 530 that is built into the Skylake processor and shares memory with the system as well as a discrete Radeon Pro 455 which has two gigabytes of GDDR5 that automatically kicks in whenever your system needs a little bit of extra GPU power. Now the 2017 model has an Intel Iris HD Graphics 630 built into the KB Lake processor. It still shares the same memory with the system, but it features an upgraded Radeon Pro 560 with four gigabytes of GDDR5. So we're starting to get somewhere, but uh, these are still just numbers on a paper and I need some real world performance data before I can you know, justify shucking out an extra thousand bucks. So to test all this, we're going to run both systems through a series of benchmarks, both synthetic and workload based, to see what kind of performance we can shake out from all of these numbers. Both laptops will be fully charged and plugged into the wall at the time that we run the test. Both of them will be running the exact same version of macOS, which is 10.12.6, and will be running all of the tests in the exact same order. So starting with the Unigen benchmark at ultra quality, the 2017 model shows only a 13% increase in raw GPU performance over the 2016 model in both total score and average frame rate. At high quality, those numbers are held pretty steady, dipping to just barely under 13%, and those gains start to disappear entirely as we drop down to medium and low quality with only a 9.5% and 6% performance improvement, respectively. Now, no one in their right mind is buying a MacBook Pro just to game on, so the example is just a little bit contrived. Also, because of how the MacBook Pro switches between the integrated and discrete GPUs, we weren't even able to test the integrated GPU, but you can bet that the performance wouldn't be any better. The Geekbench 4 tests were similarly disappointing. The 2017 model scored 10% higher in single core workloads and only 8% higher in multi-core. The first of the integrated Intel GPU tests showed a 9.8% increase, and the discrete AMD GPU showed a 14.5% increase. Cinebench R15 tests synthetic rendering capabilities in single core, multi-core, and discrete GPU modes and showed a whopping 30.5% increase in single core performance, a dismal 8.5% increase in multi-core test, and a 17.7% increase in discrete GPU performance. Now those are all synthetic tests, so lastly we're going to throw a Blender benchmark at both systems with a 19% increase in multi-core rendering and a 16.5% increase in GPU performance. So, finally, is the 2017 MacBook Pro worth the extra $1,000? Uh, it's pretty hard to justify given how close both of these systems are in performance. So to give you a practical answer, if we take the Blender tests and average those numbers out to be about a 17% performance increase, and you figure that we produce four videos a month, what that turns into over the course of a year is a an hour and 26 minutes worth of time that you saved for a thousand bucks. Uh, now, that number increases a lot as you either do more renders or if your renders take a little bit longer. So, for example, if we rendered 60 minute videos, you would save about eight and a half, almost nine hours over the course of a year. Uh, or 
What you could do is buy the 2016 model and with that extra thousand dollars, build a baller desktop that would run circles around both systems. All right, that's it for this week. Thank you everybody for stopping by to check out the video. Uh, I feel good about this. I feel like we finally got an answer for whether or not the 2016 is, is worth it and it most definitely is. So if you haven't already done so, please like, share, and subscribe. We really, really do appreciate it. We take the time to read every comment and respond to as many of them as we possibly can. Definitely leave some comments below if you like what we're doing or if you have some suggestions for additional videos. And I will see you all next time.